The insignia sees Opel entering a new era. The German car maker is focusing on cutting edge technology and stylish design at reasonable prices in the mid-range segment as well. The new insignia pulls no punches and is intended as the successor to the Vectra. And it's not just in the field of design that it sets new standards. Opel marketing executive Alain Visser believes the model's appeal will extend beyond the company's Vectra target group. It combines original design and technology with new innovations, he says, which will let Opel capture a new target group. The front end features a distinctive radiator grille with the revamped Opel logo. And while this model is a five-door hatchback version, the roof gives it a coupe-like character. The rear features a stylish chrome strip. Alain Visse says he's proud of Opel's German engineering values with regard to both design and quality. He considers the fact that a vehicle is made in Germany, and especially in the company's hometown of Rüsselsheim, a very symbolic element. The sport equipment versions and higher models are equipped with the FlexRide adaptive suspension system. In addition to the regular setting, drivers can also select the Ride Optimize Tour option, or for the more adventurous, the Sport setting. Opel's managing director Hans de Mont points out the wide range of new features. The smart chassis, for example, has adjustable shock absorbers and brakes. The Insignia also impresses in extreme situations when the going gets tough. FlexRide, standard fitted in all-wheel drive models, ensures stability and dynamic handling under all types of conditions. The interior comes in a range of four trim versions. The cockpit has a stylish layout, but with a minimum of fuss. The seats, meanwhile, are top-notch in terms of ergonomics, ride comfort, and safety. The rear seats can be folded down to increase the cargo area from 520 to 1,400 liters. Buyers have a range of seven engines to choose from. All models are equipped with a six-speed transmission. We tested the most dynamic gasoline-powered model featuring all-wheel drive and 260 horsepower. In Germany, the Insignia is due to arrive at dealer showrooms in November in fastback and hatchback versions, followed by more fuel-efficient EcoFlex models next year. A station wagon, the Sports Tourer, is set to be launched next spring in Europe. The Mercedes-Benz Classic Days are a welcome get-together for the stars of yesteryear. This year, vintage car lovers from all over Europe converged on England. All the people are enthusiastic, enthusiasts about Mercedes-Benz, the classic cars, and uh, it's fun. We have fun with each other. We, uh, we drive on the racetrack, we have uh, a good drink and something to eat, and just enjoying. It's a holiday for us. A vacation combined with a trip back through automotive history to the early days of motor racing, for example. Franz Mach loves driving his Mercedes, which is 80 years old and has power galore. A unique car, he says, such fantastic torque. 7,200 cc and 250 horsepower. Franz Mach has come all the way from Essen in Germany a 500-kilometer trip, which he naturally made in his 710 SS, which hails from 1927. Joining him here is his friend Manfred Dietze in a 720 SSK. The two powerhouses are the forerunners of today's Formula One cars. 
even the likes of Lewis Hamilton have the greatest respect. Well, for me, I'm obviously, in this day and age, you see all the, you don't get to see such quality, I don't think. I think in the olden days, they really made them to last because look at this car, it looks fantastic already, and it's from the 1930s. Manfred Dietze and Franz Mag are careful drivers. Their cars mean more to them than just fun at the wheel. It's a friendship, says Manfred. Cars have to be understood, even if they're not living beings. You develop a kind of relationship, he says. The two are rarely disappointed, adds Franz. Despite being driven like crazy for 20 years, Manfred's car has never had any problems. There's been the odd transmission breakdown, but it was the original unit after all. Once a car like this has been restored, says Franz, at last for a generation. Which is just as well, given the never-ending supply of vintage car fans. The Audi TTS is the new top-of-the-line performance version of the TT. Now it's time to take a closer look at the Roadster and its 2-liter TFSI engine. The German car maker has boosted the car's power and improved its performance as well. The magnetic ride adaptive suspension allows the car to hug the road even at high speeds. Many modifications were made under the hood. He says the revamped engine in the new TTS now packs 272 horsepower, which allows it to dash from 0 to 100 in just 5.4 seconds. And it has an electronically controlled maximum speed of 250 kilometers per hour. Audi also enhanced the layout of the engine. He says the crankshaft bearings have been reinforced and the connecting rods have been modified to make the engine more robust. The turbocharger has a larger turbine so that it can provide the engine with more air. Thanks to its torque of 350 newton meters, the Roadster can accelerate from 80 to 120 kilometers per hour in a mere 4.6 seconds. At speeds below 50, a simple press of a button opens the roof in just 12 seconds. Whether it's open or closed, the TTS provides 250 liters of cargo space. Seen from the side, the large 18-inch wheels and silver mirrors make a striking impression. The large grille stands out in the front. The retractable spoiler deploys automatically at 120 kilometers per hour and returns once the speed drops to 80. The chrome-plated pedals enhance the interior sporty look. The instruments feature aluminum trim and the gauges spin forward on ignition. The low sport seats are standard and decked with silk Napa leather and Alcantara. The TTS boasts excellent handling and acceleration. In Germany, it's available for just over 48,000 euros.